Today's video is all about Stellar Crown, as you guys can see right here. But first, in order to tell the story that I want to tell about Stellar Crown, we're going to have to take a look at a different recent set, and that's Twilight Masquerade. Now, just hear me out. I have a few interesting points that I think could heavily pertain to Stellar Crown. Now, starting off with Twilight Masquerade, if you guys will remember, you guys can go back, you can go on YouTube, you can go on Reddit, you can go on Facebook groups, everybody or not everybody but the vast majority of people including myself i i believe i put out a video saying that twilight masquerade was going to be trash and um i always admit when i was wrong and i was wrong and what's interesting about that this set particular besides the greninja right we're not we're not even talking about the greninja right now we're just talking about um the booster box prices obviously the greninja is a reason why the booster boxes have been taking off but this is like one of the first sets like, that came out of the gate with uh, in the Scarlet and Violet era that just like kind of took off and started getting some traction. Like as you guys can see right here, we're at uh, 120 a box with a sale at 137. So like this thing is on the move, and it kind of because uh, we got Shrouded Fable, but that doesn't have booster boxes, and so Stellar Crown is the next booster box set, and I feel like this. Uh, I just want to make you guys aware that there's something that could happen with Stellar Crown. And we're seeing, uh, traditionally, any booster box that comes out, usually, including myself, I would wait. Because um, usually pre-release prices, they're up. I would wait, you know, a few months, and then you're able to get them well below MSRP at that high 80s, low 90 range. That's when I like to strike. But I'm taking a different approach with Stellar Crown, and that's kind of the point of this. I pre-ordered a case um, to start. Um, I, I don't usually, I don't get a ton per uh, per set currently, but I wanted to make sure that at least off the bat, I got a case ordered. And because I don't know what's going to happen. Just because with Twilight doing this, you guys can see it did hit down below, like at 100, but then it just steadily climbed and took off. So, I mean, we're seeing with the Scarlet and Violet era, like, look at Paldea, 137 a box, with the listed medium price at 145 okay? Even Obsidian Flames, it's taken off now, 117 with the listed medium price at 130 Obsidian Flames, that everyone said was trash. By the way, I, still, I said Obsidian Flames was going to be a good investment long term. So, uh, underrated, underrated set, uh, but hey, there we are, there we go. Now, that brings us to Stellar Crown. And you can see uh, these are the pre orders here. They came out at 130. They dipped down to, you know, 106. But we're seeing a lot of sales. A lot of people are uh, going to be chomping at the bit for a mainline set on top of because Shrouded Fable, the ETBs aren't coming out, at least here in the US. And everything's been delayed. And that set doesn't look very good. And. People are excited for Stellar Crown, okay? So I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm taking a little bit different approach. I'm getting at least one case. Um, I can only Currently, I can only afford one case. I would do more, honestly, if I had a little bit more capital available. But uh, one case out the gate, and then I'll see where it goes. Um, but I wanted to secure a case because you just don't know. Like, this set might just take off. Um, and I'm saying that because, Twilight, because of Twilight. I'm not saying that it is... 100% going to take off, but I'm going to give you guys some other reasons why uh, here in a second. Also, uh, we'll just show some eBay. Um, you know, you guys don't have to only buy from TCG. Obviously, the cheapest on TCG is 106 right now. Um, you can save a few bucks on eBay. <laughs> At 105, uh, you can get a case on eBay for 600. Um, I believe I found uh, a case that was a little bit cheaper. Um, I don't have it pulled up right now. It was Forge and Fire Gaming. Uh, I believe their cases were cheaper than this. Uh, at least at the time when I ordered mine. But let's jump into the card list and let's talk about why I kind of think that there is some potential here uh, for this to be a good set. And starting with the illustration rares. Now, it is important to note that this is a smaller set than Twilight. It's not as big, okay? But... Uh, I've talked about this before in a past video, and it's this Bulbasaur and this Squirtle. I could see, um, we'll pull them up here bigger for you guys. I could see these cards 
uh, following the path of the Eevee from Twilight. Uh, albeit probably not as high, like I said, because it's a sm- there's not as many IRs in the set. So the pull rates will probably be easier. Um, we don't know for certain yet until the set is released. But, so that is a factor um the rarity and when there's not as many irs so but these cards are in that same um like cuteness amazing gen 1 pokemon um prime to uh be be valuable uh we don't know to what extent yet but so with the irs here also i think just a little low-key like lydian i like this pokemon from gen 2 so um probably not going to be that popular of a card but i do like this card as well and then, uh, you know, rounding these out, I see the uh, the Joltik, I think is kind of cool. But this right here, the Zorora, um, for the for an IR, uh, I think is a very cool looking card. There's we got some potential there, and we got some full arts here. You know, nothing, nothing that super like catches my eye. But but why this set could be crazy. So the Greninja is kind of like a different uh, art art style and everything these rainbow borders this is my main reason not these cards in particular although these could do very well but when we we scroll down a little bit more it's these cards right here the terrapagos with the rainbow uh we just we haven't seen this before okay so it is entirely entirely possible that these cards go bananas Um, it's going to depend on rarity, obviously, and pull rates. Um, and like I said, so smaller set, so not super likely, um, for it to be quite like Twilight, but it's a possibility. Twilight set the precedent that these new sets can take off from the beginning and hold. So that's why, um, there could be a lot of people getting into this set early and it not dropping. I just wanted to make you guys aware. I'm not, I'm not. I can't say for certain. Uh, there's no way anybody who's who tells you that they like this is what's going to happen. No, they don't know. They're lying. Um, I'm just being honest. I'm just saying that this is a heavy possibility. Um, and whether you like this the style of the Terra Pokemon or not, um, I think Greninja proved that they're here to stay. And these Rainbow Borders are looking potentially crazy. Um, I really, if, if you guys haven't seen the new anime, I brought this point up before. This is what these kids are watching now. The new Horizons, the English dub just came out for part three. And this Pokemon is heavily, heavily, heavily featured. So that is very important. And the Pokemon is very adorable in the show. So um, that can lend to some popularity of the card. I know that... Um, For me personally, when I first looked at this set, I kind of went, eh. But once I start looking at it, I'm really liking it. Um, There is potential here. It just depends. Will the market accept it? Also, um, this is my my underrated uh, SIR. The Dash Bun. Something about this this artwork just really gets me. I love this card. I I, I don't really like the newer Pokemon that much, if I'm being completely honest. Um, But I want this card really bad. I want this card. So um, I hope this all makes sense to you guys. I just wanted to give, um, you know, I'm not the biggest on these trainers. Um, We'll see what this card does. Could be interesting, some of these. Um, You know, I'm I'm never big on the trainers. Um, I'm not super big on the golds either, but, uh, you know, I don't think these ones, I mean, if if any, it would probably be this one. But um, so, yeah. That's that's kind of going to do it for this one. Um, so to summarize, Twilight laid the groundwork for SV era sets to, um, whether you want to call them good or not, is up to you, but uh, laid they it laid the groundwork for uh, there to be expensive cards and expensive boxes right out of the gate. Okay, so it's bucking, it bucked the trend that we've seen all of the sets follow, and I think that it is very possible f- for the market to react to Stellar Crown in a different way. And I'm saying that because I'm seeing it, and then also I'm doing it. My instinct is I got, I, I pre-ordered. Um, normally I would wait. I, I was waiting on uh, all my other booster boxes from the Scarlet and Violet era. I was getting 
in the uh, 80 to low $90 range. I'm talking on uh, TCG player, TikTok deals, um, all over the place, right? We were, I was able to get those and, and that's what I was enjoying doing, but we, we might be in a little bit different time now. So that is why I wanted to make this video. Um, it is not to, uh, hype up the set too much and to, to, uh, make you guys FOMO into buying boxes or cases that you didn't want to buy. I just wanted to make you guys aware uh, that it is possible, okay? And we don't know, we don't know the print runs of all of these sets, and, and but we do know that Pokemon is printing a lot currently. But I say this, uh, bringing this up because with Shrouded Fable and they're having production um, issues, which is why the ETBs were delayed. It shouldn't affect these booster boxes, but we don't know, we don't know what what the production delay was. Was it just printing? Was it? Did it have to do with the ETB boxes? Did it have to do with something else that wasn't even related to the cards? We don't know. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. If that, if some sort of printing error or production error um, limits future print runs, I, I don't know. I don't see that as being very likely, but um, it's just something, just something to think about. So yeah. Um, that is Stellar Crown in a nutshell. I'm actually excited for it. This is the first set, uh, full set in a while that I've been pretty pumped on, um, believe it or not. So, um, and I've said it before, it wasn't just Twilight that I was down on. Uh, it was Temporal Forces as well. And uh, Temporal's proven to be a, a great set and has some great cards and holding great value. So... Um, it'd be funny now that I'm getting ahead of this one, if this is the one that just tanks, but, um, I don't think that's the case. So that is going to do it for this one, guys. Um, let me know if you made, well, first off, if you made it this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, do me a huge favor, subscribe so you can stay up to date on when I post my latest videos. Also, uh, I'm doing a giveaway. There is a, we're about to hit 5,000 subscribers. So to enter that giveaway, um, I'll put the link to the video, but it was, uh, one of my last videos, um, you just have to com watch, like, comment that on that video, and uh, you'll be entered to win. Uh, we're doing a Japanese 151 booster box, uh, PSA 10 of your choice. I'm going to give you a few options, uh, aiming for at least $50 value, and then some uh, sleeved blisters. So there'll be three winners, and I'll be shipping all those out. And I'll be announcing that later. Uh, once After we hit 5,000, I'll make a video announcing the winner, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.